My name is Jean-Luc Toulou. I was the administrative director of the number one company on the water market, Veolia, for 30 years. I was responsible for the contracts with the southern districts of Paris. This work has shown me how an expansive corporation milks water consumers. That is why I wrote this book. Veolia offered me 1 million euros to prevent a court case which actually would have promoted the book. Naturally, I declined and was immediately fired. Afterwards, I was bombarded with lawsuits, but won all of them. We are standing on the banks on the River Seine, which divides Paris in two. Until the end of 2009, the Paris Water Administration was also divided. For 25 years, the administration of the southern area was handled by Lyonnaise de Zoo Suez, and the north by a company previously named Vivendi, today known as Veolia. The global players of the private water market, Veolia and Suez, are both French. Here, they administer 80% of the water supply. Both companies deny that this is a privatization, but rather a public-private partnership. Contrary to a regular privatization in the public-private partnership model, the assets remain owned by the community, but are administered by the corporations. Since privatization is continually being met with skepticism, the so-called French model, PPP, is gaining worldwide popularity. No other country has had more experience with Veolia, Suez and this PPP model than France. Over the years, as an administrative employee at Veolia, it became clear to me what a scam the system of PPP really is, especially in the accounting and finance sector. This, of course, is affecting the price for water. In only the past 10 years, the price for water in Paris has risen by over 100%. Thanks to the resulting accumulation of profits, these companies were able to gradually expand. To begin with, it was just dealing water, then sewage and consequently waste disposal, transportation and heating were also included. At the end of the 1980s, they bought into television, newspapers, music, school cafeterias and hospitals. Consumers living in Veolia or Suez operated cities, in fact deal more or less with them several times a day. Ile de France, the 144 municipalities surrounding Paris, are joined together in a communal water board. Since over 60 years, the 5 million water clients are being provided by Veolia, paying substantially more for their water than those in Paris itself. At the end of 2009, the representatives of the communities decided between staying with the private operator or giving back the water into public hands. Just under half of the communities are in support of a public administration, joined by Jean-Luc Tully. However, the unions, surprisingly, stick to Veolia. Yes, yes, we know Jean-Luc Toulou. We know him very well. He was in the company. Jean-Luc Toulou is not defending the interests of the employees in this case. 
Over a period of time, I was the number two in the Union CGT at Vivendi Violia U. During that time, the company offered me a bonus that would have doubled my income. There were several who accepted them, not me. For example, a union member, aged about 40 with 20 years in the company, received 60,000 euros instead of 30,000 euros. You see, he doubles his income. For a single person, that's a lot, but for a company like Veolia, with its massive profits, it means nothing. Thus, you inexpensively buy social peace. But not only trade union members stick to Veolia. Are you to leave? Voilà. Ah, I know you're fired. <laughs> It's no coincidence that this gentleman knows the internal files of Veolia. André Santini, being the chairman of the Public Water Alliance, has to commission and control Veolia, because the alliance is, of course, the... Les patrons, patron, and the publicly elected representatives are the legal owners of all plants, all pipelines, all facilities, even down to the last pencil, and the present operating company only does what it's asked to do. Yes, that's the way it should be. At the same time, Mr. Santini is chairman of the water administration of the Seine Normandie, which gives out cheap credits to, amongst others, Veolia. His delegate is even a board member of the board at Veolia, and so Mr. Santini may be getting confused as to who he's representing at present. Only a few months ago, Mr. Santini, as the chairman for the Public Water Alliance, sent a letter to all the mayors of the cities in the alliance with Veolia's company letterhead. They are that closely knit. Just imagine the Minister of Defense sending out a letter with a letterhead from a weapons manufacturing company. Several public representatives associate mainly financial interests with Veolia. In a secret vote, a majority decides upon a prolongation of the contract, which Veolia, after the announcement, wins. Corruption. The delegates should have declared their position in a public vote. A lot of money is at stake here. We're talking about an operating contract of over 300 million yearly. Veolia generates a win of up to 70 million per year. Without a doubt, this generated serious pressure. It is a good thing to combine the public representatives with the intelligence, the competence and the experience of the private companies. It is a great formula. And this vote has confirmed it. Ladies, thank you. Merci. Merci. Grenoble, a city in the French Alps. Here, the other global player, Suez Lyonnais de So has shown how the competence and experience of a private company are to be combined with the interests of the mayor. For a hundred years, the water was under public administration, which functioned really well. As I was elected into the city council of Grenoble in 1989, the pipes, canalization, water reservoirs and the water pump system were in good condition. The mayor at the time, who was the former environmental minister, decided, however, to privatize in 1989 and passed on the complete management of water to Lyonnais de Zou, Suez. Here is where Suez bribed the mayor. And it's here where the decision was made to privatize the water in Grenoble. This is also the place where the corrupt mayor was sentenced for privatizing the water to Lyonnais de Zou's advantage. De la Lyonnaise des Eaux. 
The bribe sum of 2 million euros was paid to him in the form of trips, cruises, apartments, and by financing his election campaign. The three people from Suez mainly responsible were also sentenced with corruption. But the moral person, the company itself, was not sentenced. The chief executive at the time was Jérôme Monod, who later became the first advisor to the president of the Republic of France, Jacques Chirac. The mayor was Alain Carignon. He was sentenced to several years in prison. As we wrote the book, he was still Minister of Communication. That made our job difficult. When the book came on the market, he was already in jail. Throughout the whole time, he remained close to Sarkozy. He's seen on photos next to Mr. Sarkozy during the election campaign. You see that on this montage here as well. Together, all is possible. And he remains a close friend to the highest person in the French state. We call it the lesson from Grenoble. Our water supply was in private hands for 10 years. Now it's been handled by the community again since 10 years. So we can compare. What happened during the time of privatization? Lyonnais de Zoo confiscated the complete knowledge. They even printed their stamp on all the pipeline maps. They made the know-how and the heritage their own. At that time, there were no one left within the public service with enough knowledge and who could control them. The corporation raised the water prices and reduced pipeline maintenance and renovations to draw higher profits. This is the water price at the time of privatization. Privatization at Suez. The price goes up. We take it back into our hands. And here we see how the price has developed. At the same time, we've tripled the maintenance work, the renovations of the canal network and installations. We've compared the water prices in about 20 French cities based on our own calculations. There were cities in which the price was correct, mainly those under public administration, such as Chambéry, Grenoble or Clermont-Ferrand. We did, however, find cities where the prices were twice as high, like in Ile-de-France, Marseille, Montpellier or Reims. There you could lower the price for water by 30 to 40 percent. Bordeaux. The water supply in Bordeaux is being operated by Suez. What makes the price so high here? During the examination of this question, a persistent finance controller came to some astonishing conclusions. Not even three years after the conclusion of the contract, the prices had risen by over 30 percent, while we were told it was only 15. So we informed ourselves at the local authority of Bordeaux. We spent a whole day there and between the two of us looked through a mountain of documents and left with over 700 photocopies. After working on it for six months, we finally managed to decipher the documents. 
For example, Lyonnais de Zoo told us a water meter for a private person with a diameter of 15 centimeters has a life expectancy of 12 years. So in their calculations, they calculated with a 12 years lifespan. But after a financial and technical inspection, we determined that these water meters actually have a lifespan of 23.8 years. So, in reality, they bill us for two water meters, while only having the cost of one. Another example. Lyonnais de Zoo stated the following. There will soon be an additional EU charge for lead piping and fittings. In accordance with this, we are increasing the rhythm of replacement by adding another 6,000 pipe connections in addition to last year's quota. This they declared in 1995. We examined all their annual reports between 1995 and 2006, and actually there were never 6,000 per year, but on average only a quarter of that. That's only one example. But there are plenty of other small measures taken, which together add up to hundreds of millions of profit. They operate with these methods also in Bordeaux, Grenoble, Paris and other cities. This financial technique is the same everywhere. The local authorities' association in Bordeaux, through investigations of their own, confirmed the conclusions of the finance controllers in 2005 but it took a court order for Suez to put the specific documents relevant to the association's investigation on the table. So it came as no surprise when the investigation concluded that the corporation, contrary to all previous statements, collects a 29% annual rate of return. Faced with these accusations, Suez responds. Matters like these quickly cause a lot of attention, so one has to look at them very carefully. And when it's concerning a private firm, people tend to fantasize. So let's really look at what we did in Bordeaux. We saved money, more so than it was required by the contract. And why were we able to do this? We managed everything ourselves close to the source, so we were able to save money. We then shared this with the community. There are millions and again millions in private profits. Of course, it's normal. Private companies want to make money. But here, we're talking about unacceptable and unjustifiable income. In 2006, the local authorities forced Suez to an additional agreement added to the contract. The corporation has to pay back 233 million euros to the community, unjustifiable profit generated through financial tricks. At the end of the contractual period, one thing is certain. One must return to public administration. I believe this is the only possibility. Another commonly used instrument of financial tactic is the so-called entrance fee. The water corporations pays large sums to the communities to attain the concession for the supplying of water. This money is considered a buyout or a gift to the community. In reality, it is usually just a credit, which the billed customers have to pay back through interest and interest on interest paid even manifold. This is also the case in Toulouse. By chance we luckily came upon this document in the administration which we quickly copied. It states the details of the payback installments of the entrance fee. 
437 500 million francs are to be paid by Veolia to the city in two installments. Followed by the listing of the monthly rates and above all the interest due upon repayment of the credit, it shows 10.44% is due on the first installment and 9.55% on the second. This proves that it was not a gift but a hidden credit. This was confirmed by the Toulouse Auditing Committee. And there you have it. The audit committee was put in place by the city of Toulouse in 2008. One of its purposes was to examine the financial reports of Veolia. And as a specialist, they hired the finance controller, Patrick Dufour de la Motte. We are here today for the last sitting of the auditing committee of the city of Toulouse. One of the reasons is that the city was given a very high entrance fee, namely 435.5 million francs. This is a heavy burden for the consumers of the city, since they are those who have to pay it back through the price for water. Meanwhile, the audit has shown that the oratory of the council was nothing but a lie. It showed that the entrance fee, in fact, is being paid back with the water prices, and the citizens of Toulouse have already paid the sum back two and a half to three times over. This is a significant reason for us to return to, well, maybe... Surely the return to public administration. We direct our criticism against the logic of the privatization of water. We did tell Veolia this at the beginning of the audit, and we have declared to them that our desire is to go back to public control. The former mayor of Toulouse, Dominique Baudy, who in 1989 brought on the privatization, used the entrance fee to lower the local taxes. In Montpellier, they used it to finance a congress centre. In Lille, they built a stadium. Elsewhere, community debts were paid. In every case, the elected city representatives used the entrance fee to gain popularity amongst their voters, for which the water consumers are continuously paying the bill. This way, Veolia and Suez have lured several mayors in France. The entrance fee is also internationally considered a deceptive door opener. In Germany as well, where the water plants are mostly still run by the public. According to Veolia, however, they have already in the past 10 years succeeded in finding their way into the supplying of water in 300 communities as a service provider or concessionaire, for example in Brunswick. What was most politically important to me was to secure the future of our city in the interest of our younger citizens. That meant to dismantle the enormous mountain of debt to secure the city's capacity to act and still invest. The largest part, which was also hotly debated, was the actual core of our city utilities, the Brunswick Utilities Company, delivering electricity, water and gas, and we privatized a smaller apartment complex, which profited much more than calculated. We privatized the complete street lighting, including the traffic light installations, like we did the wastewater disposal. We also privatized that to the company Alba. And a few years ago, we almost reached the end mark by taking our biggest step in privatizing the disposal of wastewater. This also brought in just about 100 million euros more. 
we got a higher sales price for this, 235 million. From this, we paid off a lot, older debts, and so on and so on. This, along with our savings, helped us dismount the burden of debts. Dazu mitläufen haben, diese große Schuldenlast abzubauen. The proceeds the city claims to have are in actuality to 100% a credit, which the city has to pay back, carried by additional fees year by year for the consumers, meaning the consumers are paying off this credit. The bank is entitled to a part of the interest, redemption of a loan for a period of 30 years, even if Veolia would cease to exist, that is, bankrupt. Veolia never paid a single cent for the license fee for the complete water management. They were given the right of utilization for nothing, free of charge. The credit that was taken is the means of a stooge, taken by the Wastewater Association Brunswick, a public authority under the control of the city itself. The city's debts are now outsourced to different companies and have to be paid back by the citizens. According to our calculations, the debt which is now 230 million will in 30 years have increased to about 500 million which the citizens then will have to come up with. Here we see a good example of what it looks like with new investments since the privatization of the wastewater industry. According to the sign, this is a high-efficiency pump plant for 7.6 million euros. Veolia is not putting up any of its own money, so the city turned to the bank and used our fees in addition to the wastewater credit as security. It is still, however, on paper a private investment by Veolia, even though they have no responsibility for the money towards the credit. The consumer does. Veolia naturally writes this off as a tax deduction, as well as earning 25% of the planning costs on top. In the end, they've earned an additional million, outside of the service contract of the wastewater management. Everything running over credits and everything carried by the fees of the consumers. Alles läuft über Kredite, für alles haftet der Gebührenzahler. These are very complicated models, otherwise you would never arrive at these sums. Many say it can't be that Veolia is refunded for all of this, but that is the reality. Veolia didn't have to invest any of its own capital in the takeover in Brunswick, and they are still earning with it, not only through the operating recompense, but can also claim the complete costs for furnishings and equipment, everything over the bank credits. The consumers and the city are held accountable. Anyone can make this deal. So these affairs, especially regarding wastewater, are complicated. So complicated that the public in general don't understand. And I have to say, not even everyone on the board of council understands them completely. This is the problem, by the way, that the councillors never get to see these contracts in full. They can look at them, but are not allowed to make copies. It is very unusual for us to have access to this compact disc containing the contracts. It was secretly given to us by someone in the administration. Obsah videa odpovídá na některé základní otázky. Budu velmi rád, když mi sdělíte váš názor na jeho obsah tady dolů pod video a současně, když mi napíšete odpověď na základní otázku. 
Kdo má dle vašeho názoru mít v rukou českou vodu, vodárenskou infrastrukturu, hospodaření s vodou a peněžní toky a zisky z vody? Zahraniční koncerny nebo městské vodárny? Pokud jste tady poprvé, tak budu rád, když se stanete součástí komunity lidí, kteří se zajímají o dění a situaci s vodou v České republice. Proto jsem pro vás tady připravil možnost stát se odběratelem videí, které jednou za 14 dnů tady dostanete. A současně tady dole pod videem máte možnost si stáhnout analýzu, kterou jsem napsal o vodárenství pro Transparency International. Pověz mi pravdu o vodě a proč ní čas plyne jako voda. Proč ji nechávat náhodě, není to škoda. S vodou tu pravdu polikám, doufám, že nejsem sám.